Hi students and welcome to today's Alive IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope all of you are having an outstanding weekend so far. Welcome Stan. Hi Romelia, our chat moderator. Hi Arianna. Hi Evan Gina. <clears throat> nice to see all of you here uh, with me today. Again, I hope everybody is having a fantastic uh, weekend. Students, this is an IELTS uh, speaking part two cue card class. Um, we are going to be talking about fit people that we know. Health and fitness, always a great topic, especially for the weekend. It's time to get out there and stretch those legs. Uh, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Uh, visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at uh, gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. They contain all of our practice exams materials. So to maximize your learning for these classes, definitely check us out there and join the premium package. This is the general IELTS website here at gieltshelp.com with the green background. Click that big red button. Uh, for the academic, it's the blue background and you can click that big red button there. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. We're an IDP affiliate, so we're a British Council partner, an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. We, help, we helped thousands of students over the years to pass their tests. Hi, Tonitha, single and savvy Anna. Nice to see all of you in the class. Uh, I sent out the uh, Zoom links for the premium students on the website for your uh, premium student class tomorrow and on Wednesday. It's just another one of the benefits of being a premium student is you get some Zoom classes each week. And if you're curious about what those look like, um, you can use this link here. All right, Rahul says, yes, sir, I got the Zoom links. Good, Rahul. That gives me confidence. It lets me know that those emails are arriving to your inbox. Uh, students uh, on the website, when you decide, yes, I like this, I want to do this each week at least a few times, uh, you can use the code VISIT9 on the website or websites to get a, an extra 10% discount. Uh, the apps are Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help, that's included with your full package. The apps uh, link to the websites. IELTS underscore AE Help and GIELTS Help, those are the Instagram profiles. You can uh, check out vocabulary and practice videos there and uh, if you have questions just send me an email adrian at aehelp.com admin at aehelp.com um, students we have our schedule from April 20th actually all the way to April 30th 30th here um, we've got uh, speaking part two and speaking part three. Uh, speaking part two is here on YouTube. Speaking part three, again, will be on the website, my student account, um, and then it will be through the join live class button. That's just behind me there. Uh, that's coming up in uh, two hours. Okay. Um, so I hope to see you in that part three class also. Ideally, you're practicing part two and part three together. Uh, they are connected. Okay, part three in the IELTS speaking is connected to part two. Um, then tomorrow we have a premium um, student class speaking on Zoom. Uh, no class on Monday, Tuesday. On Wednesday, we'll have a reading class for premium uh, students on the website. And then uh, we go to YouTube again for speaking part one. All right, everybody. Um, let's uh, jump in. So oh, we, we have a speaking video for you on YouTube as well. There's the link. Uh, let's jump in. Here's IELTS speaking part two. So in the IELTS, uh, you are in the speaking interview for about 
12 to 15 minutes. It's somewhere in between there. Um, at times it's just a quick 12 minutes. At times it can uh, be a little bit longer. Don't worry about the time. Just do your best. Make sure that you're answering the questions completely and as best as you can. Um, I'll speaking part two. Make sure you speak and repeat. So I like that you're listening to me. I also love when you're speaking. So speak and repeat. Copy what I say and copy how I say it. Um, in the speaking section, you take about five minutes for part one. Uh, we did that earlier this week. You can check out that video if you missed it on YouTube. Basically for part one, it's introductions, who you are, and a general topic like hobbies, sports, um, sleep, flowers is what we talked about this week. And then after five minutes, the examiner says that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions, think about your answers, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. You can take notes in the one minute time if you wish. Describe a healthy and fit person you know that plays sports. Your one minute preparation time begins now. So, step number one. Not quickly, just calmly with good attention. Read the card. So don't be like, describe a healthy fit person. Who is the person? What is it? How does it? What is your opinion of him? Okay, it's not the goal. <laughs> You're not trying to beat the reading section in the last couple of minutes. This is speaking part two. You have 60 seconds. First of all, make sure you understand what you're supposed to do. If you speak off topic, you will lose a lot of marks. Okay. So, um, or you will not get a lot of marks, we can say that. Um, so read it carefully. Describe a healthy and fit person. <laughs> your grammar. Describe a healthy and fit person you know that plays sports. Who is the person? What sports do they play? How does playing sports affect this person's life? What is your opinion of him or her? Kunduz, you're in the right place to improve your English skills. Pay attention, speak, and repeat. Okay, um, and there's terrible advice on the internet telling people that the questions are just there to guide you. You don't have to answer all of them. That's terrible advice. Um, you should definitely try to answer all of them. And one reason that is terrible advice is because when you're not paying attention to the questions, it's easy to go way off topic and then you're not getting marks for your speaking. You won't get a good score in part two just for speaking. Okay, It has to be on the cue card topic. And one way to stay on that topic is to answer the questions on the card. It makes sense. All right. Um, it's sensible, as they say. Um, so let's do this. So we read the question. We clearly understand it, right? Juan? Kunduz? Google Han? Debra? Yes? Everybody understands the questions clearly. You've all read it. You've all said it. I can hear you, you know. I'm <laughs> just. <laughs> Where is he? Um, all right. Uh, so, but the examiner sure will be able to. All right. And he's in the same room. Okay. Anna says, yes, I get it. <laughs> okay. So that's your step one. Okay. Step one. Read the questions attentively. You must strive to answer these questions. You should not think of these questions as optional. Oh, I can answer them if I want to. I'll just talk about this guy who's healthy and fit. 
Um, all right, in step two, identify the category. Okay, are you talking about a person, a place, an event, an idea, or an object? In this case, you very quickly recognize that you're talking about a person. All right, students, when we talk about a person, how should we talk about them so our listener gets a good story? Okay. So what should you say when you talk about a person? So in this case, we're talking about a healthy and fit person. So an athlete, basically, or somebody who is athletic. Okay. So what should you say? Ariadna says, well, you'd want to describe what they look like so they don't just look like a stick man. If you don't tell a person what this person looks like, especially when you're, you, I mean, you're talking about a healthy and fit person. So you want to say, you know, they have broad shoulders, they're muscular, they're lean. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. But definitely you don't want your listener to just see this uh, stick man. Hey, I have a healthy and fit friend. They're so hardworking. Okay, this is Adrian's friend right here. Hi, friend. That is Adrian's friend. And that's pretty much <laughs> what the listener will have in their head the whole time. Okay? Stick people. Okay? So you definitely want to discuss a little bit about what this person looks like. Okay? So the appearance. And yes, you want to uh, talk about uh, their personality with actions. Okay, so before we even get to step three, right? Here we're talking about a healthy and fit person. Uh, students, what are some words that describe the appearance of a healthy and fit person? Okay, so broad shoulders. Sure. What else? Anna says we can say they're slim. Uh, slim, yes. Slim could also be unhealthy, right? Somebody could be unhealthy. Muscular, yes. Very good, single and savvy. Muscular. Romelia says, how about well-built? Yes. Uh, fit body is a really a little bit weird. MS products, you like, you wouldn't you wouldn't actually hear a native speaker say fit body. They would just say fit. They wouldn't say fit body, okay? Robust Stan would not, robust would actually mean they're a little bit overweight. Ariadna, we wouldn't say muscular body, we would just say muscular, like what's already here, okay? There are a lot of, Juan says good humor because of endorphins. Uh, that's a little bit strange. Like, I get what you're saying, but um, I would probably say cheery. Uh, Pamindu says chest, but what about chest? Uh, Noor, massive spine, no. I'm starting to see that um, there's a little bit of lack of vocabulary going on or understanding of how to describe fit people. Just keep going, though. Um, Okay, how about chisel chest? <laughs> chisel. Chisel chest. Uh, if somebody has like really strong pecs, they, we say they have a chisel chest. <laughs> okay. Um, we don't say nice shape, Dalali. We'll say nice figure. Okay, this is a very good topic, everybody. I'm starting to realize that uh, there's definitely a little bit of... Uh... Oh, uh, Shuhanur, very good. Six pack. Six pack is um, a very uh, strong stomach, okay? So when the stomach, uh, that's a good one. When the stomach has like uh, this shape to it, it's called a six pack when you can see those abdominal muscles, okay?
okay? So that's called a six pack because there's six, there's actually more, but six very clear muscle groups there, okay? So <clears throat> broad shoulders, slim, muscular, well-built, fit, chisel chest, nice figure, six pack. What is big arms? Okay, Noor, that's okay. Big arms is uh, is okay. Big arms. Uh, when you, what is this muscle called? Let's talk about muscle groups a little bit. So, um, what is this muscle called here? That's that's kind of up up here. This one. That's right, Dimitri. Biceps. Yeah. So sometimes we'll say huge biceps. Huge biceps. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, triceps are the muscles back here. Yeah, big triceps. Those are the ones on the opposite side. Strong uh, triceps. Okay. Sure. All right. <laughs> Short hair. Uh, maybe. I don't know if that uh, relates necessarily to being fit. Okay. So <clears throat> those are some uh, those are some good words, and uh, there's lots more. So if you look up how to describe fit people, you're going to um, find a lot more. Uh, you can also say they're lean. Okay, lean means there's not a lot of body fat. <clears throat> Uh, so when somebody is lean, uh, they're also called something else. So lean, if somebody is very lean, like they don't have a lot of fat on them, so you can see all their muscles, there's a very common way that will um, describe that person in natural English. Anybody know what that is? So for everybody joining in, we're just um, working on speaking part two, the cue card. And the cue card here is describe a healthy and fit person you know that plays sports. Okay, uh, so that's what we're working on here. Uh, if they're very lean and they're muscular, skinny, no. So remember people that uh, skinny and um, slim are not necessarily healthy and fit. Somebody could be unhealthy and slim or skinny, especially skinny. Skinny often is not associated with healthy, strong uh, body. If they're lean, they are also, starts with a C, it's a very, um, simple word once you know it lean is uh, usually athletic uh, Ugo Han lean means that there's not a lot of fat it's just mostly uh, muscle okay a very lean person is also called cut okay so we'll often say um, he is cut just like that or she is cut uh, this is a very common and very simple way um, the person is fit and muscular without body fat <clears throat> we'll even say like if somebody's very lean then we'll say they're super cut Mukarama chunky would be the opposite. Okay, or plump would be the opposite of that. Okay, so remember this expression, everybody. It's very common. He is cut or she is cut. Okay. Uh, we don't use durable uh, for humans, right? Single and savvy toned is, is a good one as well. So cut or toned. Uh, toned is almost more kind of industry. So if somebody's in the, into fitness, then we say toning or they're toned. Uh, every day it's more cut. Person's very cut. Okay. Uh, so now um, personality or characteristics, right? Uh, some of you are uh, talking more about their characteristics than their um, 
appearance okay uh, so uh, for instance um, no durable is more for objects Ugulhan okay uh, extrovert introvert is not necessarily for a fit individual think about um, characteristics that are for fit so agile is a good one agile means like basically uh, flexible okay so they're agile they're flexible uh, what is an action that can um, that can describe agile so characteristics and personality should always be matched with action that's how it becomes really good speaking so <clears throat> agile uh, when you're saying the person's agile you should mix that with <coughs> excuse me okay so when you're saying that the person is agile you should mix that with an action that proves that they're agile oh all right so what would be a common movement now single and savvy you've got some good vocabulary so make sure you have good strategy instead of jumping from characteristic to characteristic always think about the action okay so if I say somebody is agile then I would say he or she can do the more more the she's I think but uh, agile she can do the do the <coughs> what is um what is an action okay so she's very flexible yes agile uh, what is um what is this called everybody let me give you a little bit more help here so when a person can do this my daughter can do this I saw her do it for the first time just the other day when they can do this with their legs what is that called okay it's not just stretching this actually has a name in English when you can get down on the ground like that that's right Dimitri very good it's called the splits do the splits okay um, now uh, Ugul Han says very fast sure fast is a sign of healthy and fit okay so what would be a good way to describe their person's fast <clears throat> okay how can we say a person is fast <clears throat> So if I'm saying to the examiner, okay, I'm going to talk about my friend John, who is extremely cut um, and into fitness. Uh, he runs every single day um, for 10 kilometers and he's super fast. What can I say? Just give me, there's no one right answer. Just give me the right or one right answer. Okay. So characteristics of a fit person, they're agile or flexible, they can do the splits, they're fast. Not fast and furious, single and savvy. Not do all things in a short time, Putri, that would not make sense for your speaking. Okay, so it has to be more sensible. So remember quantification. So for fast, I would say something like uh, runs 10K uh, in 38 uh, minutes. Okay, uh, don't akin him to another person. So give numbers, um, or you could say runs a kilometer. Under four minutes. That kind of speaking gets you a lot of points. Okay, so try repeating this everybody. Uh, my uh, friend, Mike, is super cut uh, he is agile and can do the splits he runs every day and he is very uh, fast uh, he can run uh, a kilometer under 3.5 minutes or three and a half minutes 
Okay, so these are the uh, uh, the right kinds of sentences. Okay, good. So Dimitri's saying um, they have good endurance. Now we don't use interestingly, we don't use the word endurance as much these days. Um, we use a different word. It starts with an S. Anybody know what that is? So when somebody can run for a very, very long time, then um, we use this word. It starts with an S. S-T. Yeah, that's right, Alexander. Stamina. Stamina. So Mike is not only quick, on his feet but he also has great uh, stamina he does a two hour uh, workout at the gym in the morning and then goes for a 10k uh, run in the evening okay that's uh, stamina all right uh, so, all right, so we've got some good characteristics now that are describing healthy and fit people, right? Agile, flexible, um, quick, fast, uh, good stamina, good endurance, okay? Uh, MMS product, versatile is not necessarily... Um, healthy and fit or athletic okay there are more characteristics though anybody know any more that would be associated with a person who is healthy and fit so having agility or flexibility having speed having stamina having strength right so strong um what would be a good way to describe somebody who's strong? How would you describe strength? Energetic is good. Deborah, energetic is kind of like stamina. Okay. Um, MMS product says confident is, is a good description as well. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second here with the uh, personality. Okay. Okay, so single and savvy says can lift a hundred pound weights. Okay. Um, yeah, so you could say something like what's um what is it called when a person's doing that? This is one of I think there's kind of some standards uh, for how we look at how strong somebody is. One is this exercise here where you have the uh this bench and then you have a person laying down like this and uh, they're lifting uh, weights like that uh, up and down uh, anybody know what that's called where they're lifting the weights like that up and down what is that called that's right Dimitri I have a feeling Dimitri likes to uh, go to the gym that was the lingo it's called a bench press Okay, so um, yeah, V says they can, be V, I know you go to the gym because you talked about it. You told me you go to the gym. So now I see where all that vocabulary is coming from. So bench press, yeah, bench, and we even use it as a verb. So bench 100 kilos, right? So they're strong, bench 100 kilos. Yeah, people in the gym won't even use the word press. They'll just say bench. Bench 100 kilograms. More than their body weight. Okay. All right, yeah, push-ups. There you go. Now we're getting into some good vocabulary. MMS product says can do 200 push-ups in one go. Okay. So... Um, at the gym, Mike always surprises uh, people when he uh, benches more than his own body weight, around 120 kilos. Sure, OK. 
Okay, good. All right, so we've got some good characteristics backed up by actions. Again, make sure to use these. Now, personality in action, okay? So again, students, this isn't just for a healthy and fit person. This is for when you're talking about people. So when you talk about people, you need to think about what they look like, create a picture for the examiner, for the listener, and then when you introduce a part of their characteristic or a part of their personality, then immediately back it up with the action that proves that characteristic or that personality. Everybody understand that, right? So I don't want to say trick because that's not the right word here, but the strategy to talk about uh, people uh, for part two is to quickly paint a picture of the individual uh, with descriptive words. And then when you state a characteristic or personality, immediately back it up with actions. Okay, one of the um, biggest mistakes that I see all the time by candidates, it doesn't matter if they have okay English or great English, one of the most common mistakes that I see is the candidate just jumps, 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 jumps from personality to characteristic to personality. So they'll do something like this. Um, I have lots of uh, friends uh, that play uh, sports, uh, but the person I want to talk about today is my uh, friend uh, Mike. He is super fit. Um, he <clears throat> plays football and goes to the gym. He is very energetic and kind. Uh, he is hard uh, working. I have known uh, Mike for uh, 10 years. Um, he is uh, super uh, friendly and helpful. Um, <clears throat> he works all the time. Uh, Mike is uh, very strong and uh, he has great stamina. Uh, Mike goes to the gym all the time. Okay, uh, this is about a band six, even though it's perfect English. Why? Because it's not very good communication. So all I see here, if you're telling me this, all I see here is this guy, Mike, who's a stick man. We don't know what he looks like. He hasn't been described. And he's super hardworking, hardworking Mike. <laughs> okay, hardworking fit Mike, hardworking uh, fit Mike. Okay, so that's who uh, you just talked about. Great, six, you're fluent. But if you want more, uh, you have to do more, okay? So if you want more, you have to tell a better story, all right? So uh, first of all, um, do not uh, waste the examiner's time and your time by saying I have a lot of friends that play sports, but the person I want to talk about today that's a waste of time, okay? Uh, instead, you want to say, uh, my good friend Mike from university is an exceptionally fit person who I have uh, known uh, for the past uh, two decades. Okay, so this is 
the better way to start. It's direct. Okay, so my good friend Mike from university is an exceptionally fit person who I have known for the past two decades. Okay. All right, and then um, he is super fit. Okay, so he is super fit. Now here, before I start talking about what he does and plays, I want to insert uh, some uh, some information there. Okay, so here in this part, I need to describe him. So he is <clears throat> very fit, or he is very um, he is cut. I already said fit up here, so I'm not going to repeat that. So he is cut. Uh, he uh, is. 185 centimeters uh, tall with broad uh, shoulders, chiseled chest, a six pack, and weighs about uh, 100 uh, kilograms. Okay. So now we have a picture of Mike, even though it's just this very cut, strong, lean individual, we still have a picture. Everybody following me? So notice the difference in the start. So I'm showing you the difference between a band six talking about a healthy and fit person versus a band nine talking about a healthy and fit person. The grammar and the vocabulary are perfect in both okay so notice this one I have lots of friends that play sports but the person I want to talk about today is my friend Mike he is super fit versus my good friend Mike from university is an exceptionally fit person whom I have known for the past two decades he is cut he is 185 centimeters tall with broad shoulders chiseled chest a six-pack and weighs about a hundred kilograms okay so that is a much better description look at what Ennis says Ennis says a hundred kilograms and a six-pack he's just a beast right we even say that he's a beast Okay, it's not much, just more detail. So At Ate says it's more detail. It's not just more detail, it's more visual as well. It's more detail, more visual, better communication, and it sounds original, right? So this would be a band nine, okay? versus the band six now here is where it gets interesting if you're talking like this okay so if this is how you're talking and you make some grammar mistakes or you make some spelling mistakes this will drop to a band five and now it's no longer enough for university or for an immigration visa right and a lot of candidates do not say this kind of templated or simple answer with perfect English so they end up with a band five however this one here, the second one, even if you make some mistakes, some grammar or word choice mistakes, then even with mistakes, this can still be as high as a band seven, which is going to be enough even for your masters or if you're going into nursing. And that's why I want you to focus on your communication and not just your vocabulary. Or your grammar everybody get it everybody get why I'm so set on making sure that you communicate correctly with your English 
Yes. Does every just some thumbs there? That's a that's a very very important point. Um, what a lot of candidates try to do is they try to perfect this method before their exam, and that's not the right attitude. So instead of trying to perfect the simple template method, it's better to achieve higher communication, even if it's with some mistakes. Okay, it's better to try to get this going, even if you have some mistakes. Okay, so that's the right strategy for your IELTS exam. So think about that, okay? Um, rather, and unfortunately, a lot of videos on the internet, on YouTube, and a lot of instructions, their goal is to try to get you to perfect the template or perfect that simple English. It doesn't work, okay? It just does not work. And examiners really don't feel comfortable giving high band scores for template simple English because it's not really, you can't really say it's good English, okay? Or very good English. So um, instead of um, practicing to perfect simple template answers, uh, focus on mastering original answers with good communication. This is much more effective. Okay, Google Hunt says, okay, I got it. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. So that's what we're doing, everybody. And when you have that, then uh, you're on the right path. Okay. Um, so let's give you a chance to practice, everybody. I'm going to get you to answer this cue card question, and I will give you a chance. We're going to use the website. I'm going to do my best here to use the uh, website um, for interacting. Uh, this is what you have to do, everybody. Let's test it out. It should be working. Hopefully it does. If not, I got a plan B, but that's okay. All right, so <clears throat> go to aehelp.com. Uh, log into your My Student account. Um, click on the blue uh, student partner speaking button. I will show you how to do this. You can do this for free. Okay, lots of you know how to do this. And then make sure your microphone is working um, and that you can connect. So uh, this is uh, the website, aehelp.com. Okay, uh, you can create a premium account by clicking the big red button. Or you can create a free account by clicking the green try demo button. And then you have a My Student account. In your My Student account, you have the uh, join live class button or yeah that's that's coming up next that's for the next class okay and then right now you have the uh, student partner speaking this dark blue button click on that button and say accept start speaking and you get into this uh, page here you see money kuntas in here hopefully some other students join up pretty quick here um, and um, you will see me in here. You're going to see me in here as master. Okay. And then uh, what you can do if you want to volunteer um, is to uh, click on the blue envelope that's next to my handle and say, I'd like to volunteer or I'd like to try. So. <clears throat> that's how you enter the uh, student partner speaking and then when you do that we'll be able to uh, talk to each other and you can try this part too now again it doesn't have to be perfect sure Ugulhan whenever you're ready I am here to assist you so waiting for some volunteers Uh, I'll put on my headphones in the meantime. And you should be able to uh, find me in here. And then we'll learn from each other. So we'll learn about your uh, friends or your family who are healthy and fit and play some sports. 
And um, if you don't know anybody who is healthy and fit and plays sports, then definitely um, encourage your family members to do so. But you can also make it up, right? So if nobody comes to mind, then you can think about a person who you used to know, pretend like you still know them, right? Um, or think about an athlete like Ronaldo and pretend like you know someone who is like them, okay? So while I'm waiting for the volunteers here, okay, and again, just find me and then send me a message, all right? And say, I want to volunteer. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to give you a bit of instructions. We'll hear that ping there, okay? It's a common question that I get, like, if, uh, what if I don't know anybody? Hopefully that's not the case. Uh, what if I don't know anybody who is fit and plays sports? Okay, then your strategy is think about a person you used to know and pretend that you still know them. Or, so that's option A, or B, think of a famous athlete and pretend you have a friend like them. Like uh, Ronaldo. And pretend you have a friend or family member who is similar to them, okay? So there's always strategies for this. All right, um, let's get back here. So Nodir is volunteering. All right, Nodir, give it a shot. Um, are you ready? Nodir, let's do this. rings but no connection let's try somebody else um, I do have a zoom link for this class as well everybody but I just want to see how we're at with the I'm hoping that the website and YouTube are behaving a little bit better sometimes things can change in the background so no dear I couldn't connect with you there I'm not sure if you uh, heard me call you but I was calling you and uh, I'm not sure if you heard that uh, Deborah let's try okay I'll try three people on the website. If I'm not able to connect with you through the website, then I will share a um, a Zoom link with you. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't hear you, Deborah. So I'm going to try one more person. Anybody want to try? Alexander, Romelia, you want to try just for fun? If I can't connect with you, then no worries. We'll we'll do the uh, Zoom link. Okay. Tran, I see you're also in there. There's a lot of people in the chat now. Okay, Mortazo, let's give it a shot. Sure. Give it a try here. Um, it might just be on my end. Somebody was saying it. It's uh, it might be on my end. Yeah, single and savvy says Zoom might be a better option. It might be. We'll try Mortazo here. Oh, I thought I heard something there for a second, but then it got cut off. So Mortazo, I can't hear you either, which is not a problem. Um, yeah, the website and uh, YouTube together don't like don't like. To play nicely uh, so that's okay um, so what I'm going to do everybody is I'll just exit this for now and then I will share a zoom link with you 
uh, in the chat and we'll communicate through Zoom. So there's the Zoom link and I will start up the Zoom session here. Okay, and then we'll practice this through Zoom. Okay, so I'm in Zoom now. Um, I just shared the Zoom link. Um, we've got uh, Harish in there now. Um, and uh, we've got more and more people. All right, now in Zoom, students, the way that we can make order from the chaos is if you're using... It's the way that we can make order from the chaos is to use... Um, the reactions. So keep yourself muted until um, we are talking to each other. Uh, the uh, reactions are uh, in the dot 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 and you can uh, raise your hand and you can lower your hand in the reactions. All right, so who would like to volunteer to um, practice this uh, part two? I think we've got uh, quite a few people in here now, like 20 or so. All right, great, lots of people there, lots and lots of people. Okay, again, for those of you who are like, where are they? Um, it's Zoom, we're in Zoom, okay, uh, Debra. Hi, Debra. Hi, Say. How is your weekend so far, Deborah? Hi, Say. Oh my God. I can hear you, Deborah, nice and clear. Hello. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can you hear me? Oops. Okay, Deborah, I'm going to Hello, mute say. you. Hello, Say. Deborah, you have to check uh, what's going on on your end there because I can hear you and I think oh. everybody else yeah, can, can too. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, now it seems to have made the connection. All right, then let's do this. Uh, I'll start you off, Deborah. Here we go. Describe a healthy and fit person you know that plays sports. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay. Peggy is a koba. It's a friend I met when I was in a nursing training institution. She's fair in complexion and in her early 30s. She plays football. In fact, she was the captain of the school team when I was in nursing. She's very energetic. And aside that, she's very friendly as well. Because of the matter she engaged herself in, she received a series of awards at the regional and even at the national level. Though it affected her academic slightly, but she didn't give up. Right after she completed the nursing, she decided to take football as her profession and quit her midwifery. And I said that she has received a series of certificates from her local and out of Ghana, a regional level. I love Peggy so much because aside her profession, she doesn't look down upon people. She encourages a lot of people who want to engage in football as a profession. Okay, your two minutes is up. I will uh, stop you there and we'll go on to uh, part uh, three. All right, Deborah. Um, first of all, I love the way you started. Um, you literally started with your friend's name, which I loved. The, the examiners really like that kind of very direct start. You said uh, Peggy Isakoba is a friend I made when I was in the nursing institution, um, and she is very fit. You want to finish with that, and she is fit and athletic. That's a great start. It's very direct. 
Okay, you said she is fair in complexion. And then you said one more part about her. You should give a little bit more. So uh, we want to really um, visualize your friend Peggy. So tell us how tall she is. Maybe give us a little bit about her weight, what she looks like, long hair, short hair, braided hair. So give a little bit um, more uh, detail. Um, and then you said she was the captain of the school team. That's great. Now you said she's very energetic and very friendly as well. So that's what I mean about like characteristic personality and then it's gone. It's like you threw it away. Um, and it's like, okay, so she's energetic. What, what does that mean? So um, Deborah, let me do it in a question format. And this is what you want to think about everybody when you're in the IELTS exam. Like you're having a question answer session with yourself. So Deborah. Um, how many times does she play uh, football in a week? As she at least whenever she get a chance, she usually um, do training on either weekends or maybe Wednesday. Yeah, most of the time either weekends or Wednesday. But those are the time that she's often free. Okay, so you don't have to have the perfect honest answer, just close. So you can say three times each week, five hours each day. So you give it numbers, give it persp and then that tells us that she's energetic. She's playing football, you know, 15, 20 hours each uh, week, right? So you give it some numbers, right? Um, she is friendly. How can you describe that Peggy's friendly? She's very sociable. How can you describe that? What does she do? What does Peggy do to be friendly or sociable? Well, because uh, she's friendly, each time she finds herself in an event, she tries to communicate, especially to the youths who want to venture into football. There you go. That's great. That's what I want to hear. When you tell me those kinds of sentences, I can give you a better score. So you can say she's very friendly. She always communicates about her games and events. She calls me and my friends to come and watch. And then we go out and have a tea and a cookie after and have a good chat. Um, so you want to include those parts, right? We want to see you with Peggy or we want to see what Peggy's doing, right? To be friendly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So more yes, description, sir. more description, right? As soon as you, and it's tricky, we have to practice this because we're not used to doing this. So we're not used to talking about people in detail and it's an important skill. So we want to practice this, okay, Deborah? So, so far your band score for what you said to me is about a band six or a 6.5, but I think you can do a lot better with your English as long as you give it more detail, okay? Awesome. All right. Thank you, Deborah, for volunteering. And I hope to see you in the next class as well. Okay. And, all right. And thank you for giving the opportunity to express myself as well. You're very welcome. Have a welcome. nice day. You too. Bye, Deborah. Bye. Same. All right. That was Deborah. Let's give Deborah a thumbs up there. I'll just admit Zahra and one other person. Okay. Um, Depesh. Diptesh, sorry. Nimit, good to see you. Uh, uh, hi, Adrian. Am I audible? You or are... should I wait for my chance? No, Diptesh, you're audible. You're perfect. How are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for asking me. All right. Uh, Diptesh, are you ready to tackle this cue card? Yes, Adrian. I'm ready to go. All right, let's do it. I'll start you off. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. Describe a healthy and fit person you know that plays sports. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to talk about my good and longtime friend, Suraj. I have known him since my schooling days. And in fact, we bonded over our first basketball game at a training center and I remember that he was very encouraging and very motivating because somewhere I saw a great passion in him for this for the sports so while I have watched a lot of basketball I feel that his connection to the game was extraordinarily special 
uh, the way he had some movements, the way he uh, did some patterns in the game, he brought a completely new dynamics to what I felt was missing in our local uh, basketball team. So, what I have felt uh, as sports in general uh, that it has touched my life is that it, it gives a sense of improved health and a sense of longe- longevity. So, with Suraj, I see him now doing so well in the sports that I have truly great admiration and respect for him. Uh, and now, uh, looking at him play at the highest level and being so competitive, it fills me with a great sense of pride to know him since my schooling days. Okay, I'm going to stop you there and I'll give you some feedback, right? So that was about two minutes. You have some good English. Now we want to use that English to really express yourself well and to communicate well. So you have um, an ability for nice complex grammar. I would give you about a band 6.5 for this between fluent and good. I would like to give you a lot more. I would like to give you like a 7.5 or an 8 for your level of English. But for me to do that, you have to show me more. Okay. So, uh, and maybe some examiners might not be as hard. They might say, well, I'll give them a 7. I'll give them a good. But they would definitely agree with me that with your English, you can do better. You can get a higher score. Okay. So. Um, before I tell you my opinion, because sometimes, you know, I think uh, viewers or people who are in, in, in these, these lessons, they're like, well, it's Adrian's opinion and he's got his ideas, but other people have other ideas and they're not always the same ideas. And it's true, but I think we do share a lot of ideas. So, um, uh, Siraj is, uh, the person we're talking about here, right, Depeche? Um, yes, yes, and, um, the introduction is relatively good. So he said, I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about my friend Siraj, um, who I met in uh, in high school in, uh, in a basketball training uh, camp. Um, everybody, what do you feel is missing from the start of this part two about Siraj? There's definitely a piece I felt was missing, and I'm just curious if anybody else felt that was missing. So... Uh, let's see if uh, if anybody else felt that in the chat. Uh, let's see if we can give Diptesha uh, a little bit of feedback that's similar. So what do you think, everybody? What would be my first critique of this response? Where I would say, hmm, I would have liked to hear a little bit about this. Um, you can comment on uh, Zoom, Juan, but uh, it's better to comment in the YouTube chat because everybody who's in Zoom is also in YouTube, but not everybody who's in YouTube is in Zoom. Okay. Single and Savvy says, we don't know the personality and characteristics of this person. I kind of felt that was missing. Um, and look at what Ming and Evgenia are saying, Dibtesh. Do you see that? Yes, yes, Adrian. I, I do notice the comments. You see the, that they're talking about the appearance. Um, why do you think that the appearance feels like it's missing for so many of us with Siraj? His, his appearance of what he looks like. Why do you think in, in specific, in particular, why do you think that's that feels like it's missing here? There's a, there's a really good answer for this, by the way, Diptesh. Think about it. Hint, think about the sport that you described him in. Yeah, I think I should have definitely mentioned uh, something about his height, uh, maybe about his build as well. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. So basketball players especially tend to have very stereotypical um, kind of shapes and sizes, right? So, okay. um, so, and it sounds to me like you're familiar with the game of basketball. So you know that in basketball you have your post players who are down low. They're usually very big people, um, very tall, very strong. And then you have your power forwards who are kind of in the mid area of the court and they're 
also often tall, but not as tall as the posts. And they're very um, agile and have great hand-eye coordination. And then um, you have the person who's up at the top, furthest away, who's often the captain of the team. Um, and they're usually the shortest person, right? Um, what is that person called? The one that's in the, the, the fifth, kind of the, the one that almost controls the movement of the of the ball anybody know so in basketball a little bit of uh, vocabulary here for everybody so basketball um and again that's why i think a lot of people were like well what does he look like is he like a two meter person or is he a um nimit says it's called the the dribbler it's not the dribbler so you have uh let me just uh really quickly create the image here so you have the court you have the hoop right here the basketball hoop and you have the biggest players down here usually these are called post okay uh, you have players up here these two and they're of course left and right um, these two are usually called the the um, shooters or the power forwards I think you have a guard or like a that's guard right well. yes the center guard it's called the center guard or the point guard right so that yeah. that position is called the point guard um, and the point guard right the center guard or point guard uh, is usually the shortest player in in many cases not always but usually the shortest because they need to be the fastest right they have to have they have to have very fast movement across the court so they all have very typical sizes and shapes so let's stop the uh, suspense here uh Diptesh. <laughs> siraj post power forward or point guard what is he uh i would say it, so he's a power forward he's a power yeah. forward okay and so what is his build he, yeah, at that time he was like uh, five foot five. Now he's somewhere around six foot three, six foot four. Okay. Yeah. How heavy? Yes, about that I would say he weighs roughly around eighty-five kilograms. Yeah, so he's basically the perfect shape for a power forward right he's but that's basically yeah. the perfect shape for a professional power forward right so here yeah. you would start with something like i would like to take this opportunity to talk about my friend siraj he is extremely fit and healthy and plays basketball i met him in high school now he is still playing basketball he is six foot three 85 kilograms lean muscle and he plays in the power uh, forward position okay so uh, you don't have yep. to say all of that just try to put his description into one sentence okay so try to repeat that part that i just said so um he is extremely cut six foot three 85 kilograms and plays power forward right Just put it all together, Diptesh. Give me that sentence. Yeah, so I, I would like to take this opportunity to talk about my friend Suraj. Uh, he he is. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Could you please excuse me? There's someone at the door. I need <laughs> to take this one. Okay, sorry, sure. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, just I'll practice that. Okay, sounds good. Bye, Diraj. <laughs> all right. Um, so Diraj has left to get the door, but everybody gets it, right? So now we know that uh, his uh, friend, uh, Siraj, is not this huge post. He's not a small point guard, but he is this power forward. So we have a much better understanding of who we're talking about, right? Um, okay, uh, let's um, try uh, Murtazo. Did everybody get that? So everybody understands why that description is so important? Hi, Murtazo. Hi, sir. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. I'm Murtazo. great. Murtazo, you, do you, did you get what I was talking to Diptesh about? Like the importance of describing the physical build, which helps us yeah. really understand. So, I, watched, mm -hmm. I watched a stream on YouTube. Uh, I think I'm ready for your questions and the things that you require. <laughs> okay, good. Now, Murtazo, 
it's not just me that requires this. It's all people <laughs> that require this. Yeah, we, if right. we want, if we want to understand about your friend or family member who's fit and athletic, we all usually want to know. Okay, well, what do they look like, and you know, how are they, and how, what kind of actions do they do? Okay, so let me start you off. Um, describe a healthy and fit person you know that plays sports. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. My father Jalal is a professional boxer from Uzbekistan that I feel admiration and I respect uh, when I heard about him. He is uh, 29 years old and he is a fit person and he is uh, 201 centimeter tall and he weighs 100 kilogram. He has a big muscles uh, he he's cut he has a, a broad shoulders he has six uh, peaks and i can describe uh, him as a most the person who has the most powerful punch in our country because uh, two years ago he put a record in our country by hitting with more than 200 kilometers force and i if i asked about uh, describe the person who is a uh, hard working i would ask yeah, i would tell about him because in 2016 in olympic at brazil rio, rio de janeiro he won a bronze in box while other boxers won a lot of boxers won gold medal and he uh, then told i will uh, prove i am a stronger person after three years preparation hard working regularly spending his time at gm he put that by winning uh, winning a, a gold medal in olympics uh, four times uh, in 2019 and in 2022 okay and i Mortazo, your time is up. I'm going to stop you there, and now we will go on to part three. Okay, good. Mortazo, you're getting the idea, right? So you're talking about this boxer. Did you say he's your father at the beginning? Yeah, but Claudia Jalolo is a provisional boxer from Uzbekistan. Boxer. Sorry, who is he? I, I couldn't catch that first couple of words. You said my brother? No, no, I didn't talk about that the person i feel admiration and respect I okay so you do so you don't purse so you don't personally know him right yeah he's famous boxer okay sure now in the question in the cue card it doesn't clearly say talk about somebody you personally know like you know yourself right we do kind of get that feeling from the questions that it should be somebody that you actually know personally but if you decide to talk about a famous person, that's okay too, if you know a lot about them. It's not completely wrong, so it's okay. All right, um, sure. Now, uh, make sure that when you're pronouncing, um, th especially at the beginning of what you're saying, it's very, very clear so that your uh, listener can understand it 100%. Um, I liked how you described his appearance. Don't rush, okay? So he is 29 years old. He is 201 centimeters tall and weighs 100 kilograms. Um, he has a six pack, huge biceps, and um, has the strongest punch in the world. Um, what weight category is he? Is I'm guessing from his size, he's a heavyweight boxer, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's an important detail. And I think that it, it kind of felt like you were rushing and that's why you missed that, right? So boxing has different weight categories. So there's heavyweight, there's featherweight, um, there's belter. So there's lots of different weight categories. So you want to kind of mention that when you're uh, talking about um, a boxer. Okay. Now you okay. said he's, you said he's extremely hard working. Um, sure i mean it takes a lot of hard work to make it to the olympics and to become a professional boxer no doubt um again you want to if if you know some information about his training or his work ethic you want to use that so you want to say like um i saw a uh show with him where he explained that he trains 10 to 12 hours every single day 
even though he is training so much, he still has time to uh, be with his family, to talk to his fans, and to help youth who are getting into boxing, right? So you want to, so don't rush Mortazo. Instead of rushing, just try to be more expressive. Are you following me? Okay. All right, so I think yeah, as I'm is, going. your band score is around a band 5.5 to 6, so it's modest moving to fluent. You're speaking continuously, and I almost want to give you um, the mark of fluent. However, in order to get a band 6, it's very important that your speech does not sound like you're listing Okay, like you're reading points like he is this he is that he is this if it sounds like you're listing points they're going to give you a mark just under fluent it has to sound more connected more natural okay okay all right so what you should do now is after this class practice talking about this character a couple more times and make it feel more like a detailed story okay okay I got you all right, Mortazo, you have some great ideas. You've got fantastic ambition. So just keep it up and keep pushing forward, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mortazo. Thank you. All right, uh, let's give everybody who volunteered so far a thumbs up, Mortazo and everybody else. They've done a fantastic uh, job so far. Uh, Nimit! You're there. We can see you. Your hand is up. <laughs> can you unmute yourself? I don't hear you just yet. Uh, you haven't unmuted, Nimit. Mm, let's see if I have to ask. Maybe I have to click that. You should be able to unmute yourself now. There. Yes, yes, Adrian. Actually, I have some problem with my mouse. Uh, so I couldn't hover my mouse to the uh, unmute button and that is the reason it, it took a bit extra time. The mouse is not healthy and fit right now, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you need a new healthy and fit mouse. Okay, <laughs> well Nimit, it's great to have you here um, and um, we can actually see you which is awesome. Um, I like that. I like when we can see the person talking. It's good. It's good interaction. Okay, uh, Nimit, let me uh, let me start you off here. Um, are you ready? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, let's do it. So, describe a healthy and fit person you know that plays sports. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Um, I would like to mention the name of uh, my friend, my good friend, uh, Sumit. Uh, he is um, he's my school friend and we used to play cricket together. Um, during my school days, uh, we represented the local school team. And since then, I have been uh, seeing him do a good progress in the given sports. He's around 5.11, which I think is a perfect uh, height for a person who plays cricket. He's not that tall and also he's not that too short. Um, he's of fair complexion and weighs around 80 to 85 kilograms. Um, he's lean. Um, yeah, he has got a lean body um, with some good heavy um, uh, heavy legs because you know you need you need uh, to run more in this sport so you should have a good um, you know, good legs and also he has got a good broad shoulders um, I would say that you know by playing this particular game of uh, of cricket um, it uh, um, it has helped him to become a better person. Um, I would say to become a more confident person, to be punctual because that is what is required when you need to uh, reach the sports ground on time and also finish it, uh, finish the game on time. And um, I think that particular. Uh, um, positive side of being punctual has helped him 
grow in a much uh, as as a much uh, um, good individual. So according to me, um, I think he has worked really hard on both his physical fitness and as well as on his game uh, on his game. And as he has grew older, uh, he has mastered uh, the game of cricket. And also okay. the your time is up. I will stop you there. Um, okay. All right, good, good, good. Lots of good elements here, Nimit. Um, so you're paying attention to the strategy. You're not rushing. You're really paying attention to okay. I want to make sense. I want to. Uh, I want my listener to clearly understand who is Summit what he does, what he looks like, what his personality is like. And that is all coming through. That's really good. So you're definitely 6.5 to 7 um, with better word choice and with a little bit better grammar. That would easily be a 775. OK, I'll show you a couple places where you're using a little bit awkward English. So you have to really pay attention to finding the correct English forms here. Um, Otherwise, structure is really good. You also paid attention to the questions, which was really good. Like, how does playing sports affect this person's life? And you talked about his punctuality and how cricket has taught him to be punctual, which helps him to be a successful person in life. And I thought that was really good that you paid attention to that uh, question. So that was fantastic, Nimit. So good job. Um, Everybody, to get those really high band scores, like band eight, band nine, you have to be concise with details. So you said, um, I would like to mention the name of my good friend, Summit. Um, now, this could be a lot faster, Nimit. So you could say, my good friend, Summit, a cricketer, is very fit and healthy. Boom. It's like very quick, straight delivery, right? And that's what you want to have is just very quick, direct detailed delivery of information um, you had quite a bit of repetition with he is my friend from school you, you mentioned he's your school friend multiple times just one time so I have known summit since grade 8 right instead of saying he's my friend from school I say from grade 8 or from grade 6 it's much more specific I can visualize the two grade 6 or two 12 year olds so uh, Nimit with uh, summit hanging out on the cricket pitch at 12 years age I can visualize that when you say I have known him or I've played cricket with him since grade six right it's just a more direct way to to approach that um, and then you had a few awkward grammatical mistakes I understood what you were saying but they were still awkward you have to work on those so you said since then I have been seeing him do a good progress um, this is awkward uh, so the correct way to say this is since then I have uh, seen him progress uh, quickly uh, to become a semi pro Right. If he's professional, then he's professional. A lot of people become semi-professional. They pay, play on men's leagues and so on. So since then, I have seen him progress quickly to become a semi-pro in adult uh, men's uh, league cricket. So again, just more content, more specific and accurate uh, grammar. Uh, can everybody repeat this? Uh, Nimit, please repeat this. So since then, I have seen him progress quickly to become a semi-pro adult cricketer. Uh, since then, I uh, since then I have seen him uh, progress and uh, become a semi-pro uh, adult cricketer. Very good. So it's very quick detailed concise right that's what you're going for um, you described his appearance that was fantastic um, and punctual <laughs> I I've been learning more and more about cricket uh, since um, a lot of students for IELTS are of course in India and uh, when um, <laughs> I, I was surprised about I mean people play cricket here in Victoria too there's a big cricket pitch uh, not far from where I am and I, I didn't realize that cricket is such a long game like you can play for like half a day <laughs> right um, yeah, that's good. And, and you actually leave the field like you have to leave the pitch 
you actually have like there's like a tea time or a lunch time and then you come back and you continue the game right so it's got multiple innings and when you talked about how um summit is um is punctual people who don't understand cricket would not understand why punctuality is such an important part of the game but it is because you actually if you don't come back on time that's going to be a problem right so so um there's a lot of punctuality that's involved with uh, cricket which i've realized uh since learning about the game and uh, maybe you want to describe that a little bit more so cricket requires a lot of attention and organization uh, cricket is the longest team sport in the world so summit playing lots of cricket has great organizational skills and he's very punctual right do you see that description so when you watch mm -hmm. this part of the lesson um in in the next day or two try to go back copy what i just said and try to describe that part of the game a little bit better of why cricket especially is good for organizational and uh, other life skills right um i think yeah. i think stamina and focus in cricket are super important because you play for like six seven eight hours right so uh, so those parts are really useful for this uh, this cue card uh, in the particular game. Uh, Nimid, thank you so much. Any questions about speaking part two or the speaking section of the IELTS exam? Uh, the only thing I would like to uh, ask you before I ask you, I would like to share with you that actually um, this was a very impromptu for me. Um, and yes, I mean, the questions were there in front of me, but as you rightly mentioned, because I was trying to make up and fix up things, I fumbled a bit and my I made some errors in, um, I would say, the grammatical errors. And I think I, I would like to, you know, work on this aspect. And as you said, I'll watch the video after a couple of days and and uh, repeat myself, uh, speak on the on the given points. Yeah. And, and you I think. Uh, yeah and i think other than that i would like to ask that um as i made the story i mean this is sumit is my friend but but he is not of a good build i didn't I, know I, I thought Sumit. I, th I actually thought sumit was a a real cricketer i i, I figured he was your friend because you were talking so yeah, well about him friend. but uh, I, I thought he was the cricketer so you did a good job making up the story yeah yeah um you said a very important point there so i i hope everybody caught that and i think it's a good point to wrap up this class on before speaking part three so uh nimit said that i had to improv this so i had to improv uh my answer um not improve Im, Im, improv improv i think it's about the yeah. same but anyway um improv means improvisation uh, is the full word there so i had to i had to improvise uh, my answer. Uh, improvise the answer means to uh, come up with um, the ideas as you're going along. It's very common. It's a very common situation in IELTS um, speaking, especially in um, uh, part two. It also happens in task two writing or in general IELTS task one where you're writing a letter. You're literally making up a story like They'll say, write a letter to a friend about. So IELTS has that as part of that. And the reason is because that's a part of life. So in everyday life, we sometimes improv situations. We don't have a choice. Um, so IELTS is testing how well can you improv in English or improvise in English. It's definitely a skill that everybody has to practice. Um, and it's a useful skill and you need to practice that before the aisle. So I think that was a smart choice, Nimit. And you made it, you know, it, when you're improvising, use what you know. So you have a friend, <laughs> Summit, you know some ideas about him, you know about cricket, and you're just putting the two together, right? So it's not like you're completely making it up. And that's a good strategy, right? And when you practice it more and more, the grammar will become better as well, Nimit. So, um, so I thought that was great. Thank you so much for volunteering. Thank you very much, Idia. All right. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next class, Nimit. Thanks. Thanks a ton. Yeah, surely, surely. All right. That was uh, that was Nimit. Everybody, let's give him um, a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, it's it's challenging. 
it's it's challenging to to do improvisation uh, but it's not impossible and there are definitely um, strategies and steps to improvising uh, effectively so uh, students um, I'm going to end the zoom session and we're going to wrap up this class for now uh, but in 30 minutes just a little bit less uh, we will have another uh, speaking part three class on the uh, website so I will live stream through the website aehelp.com okay uh, for academic IELTS uh, check us out there uh, for the uh, general IELTS check us out at gialtshelp.com thank you to all the viewers and especially to all of the volunteers for sharing your stories um, I saw there were some more of you who wanted to volunteer worry not uh, Azim and others um, I will give you a chance to speak in the next class for speaking part three until then everybody uh, check out the website uh, aehelp.com this is where you're going to have your next live class okay uh, you create the my student account and that blue button will become active in 30 minutes and then um, for general IELTS it's the green background okay all right Ariadna you're super welcome I appreciate you being here and everybody else see you soon bye for now everybody